Did you know that Bacillus probiotics can make natural antibiotics right inside of your gut? And this is something that most regular probiotics can't do. Most probiotics can't actively fight bad bacteria. And that's one reason a lot of people are left disappointed after using probiotics to address a gut overgrowth. In this video, you'll learn how Bacillus probiotics can support your gut in ways that typical probiotics cannot, including the following. Three reasons Bacillus probiotics are different. How spores survive and thrive where lactobacillus and bifidobacteria cannot. I'll also cover the antibiotic arsenal of Bacillus subtilis and the unique compounds these bacteria produce. There's also five ways that Bacillus antibiotics work in the GI system, and that can range from busting through biofilms to balancing out the microbiome. And I'll also cover why this matters for C. diff and other gut infections, and what research is showing about relapse and recovery. And lastly, what you need to know about using Bacillus probiotics. Hi, I'm Michelle Moore, and this video is about the science of probiotics, and it is not medical advice. I'm sharing what I have learned as a microbiologist through research and experience, so be sure you talk to your doctor about what's best for you. There's several strains of bacillus that are used as probiotics. Bacillus probiotics stand out because they are much more hardy than traditional probiotics. Unlike the popular lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, the traditional probiotics, these are very fragile. They have a hard time surviving the GI system, the heat, the harsh acidity, and so their potency values will drop on the way through the GI system. But bacillus spore probiotics will actually survive the entire trip through the GI system and arrive in your large intestine at a 100% potency. That's because bacillus form a protective spore form, and when the probiotic is created with the spore form, these spores, they're like tough, hardy seeds, can survive high temperatures, they can survive stomach acid, even antibiotics. And all of this means that they all arrive where you need them at full potency, which is inside of your gut. Second of all, bacillus spore probiotics don't require refrigeration. Traditional lactobacillus and bifidobacteria probiotics will lose their potency over time, just sitting in the bottle, on the shelf, or during shipping, or through your GI system. Bacillus spores are naturally shelf stable. They don't require refrigeration, which means you don't need to worry after they've shipped through summer hot temperatures or if they've been sitting on your shelf for a while. And the third unique thing about Bacillus probiotics is their amazing ability to produce a lot of natural antimicrobials direct in the gut. Most probiotics can't produce these natural antimicrobials that suppress harmful bacteria. However, Bacillus probiotics devote four to 5% of their genome in producing up to 20 different natural antimicrobial substances. This includes lantibiotics, lipopeptides, and numerous small molecules. Now this is a really unique and robust feature that sets Bacillus probiotics apart from the rest, and we'll talk about this more next. When I talk about the antibiotic arsenal of Bacillus subtilis, I'm talking about its ability to produce natural antibiotics. And these are compounds made to fight off pathogens and competing bacteria. Now, these aren't synthetic lab-made antibiotics that you would pick up at the pharmacy. Instead, these are precise and naturally evolved substances that work right inside of the gut environment. And unlike broad spectrum drugs you would pick up at your pharmacy that wipe out both the good and the bad bacteria, Bacillus antibiotics act with more balance by targeting harmful microbes while helping to promote and restore a diverse microbiome. 
And I do want to mention there are several bacillus species that will make these natural antibiotics, but for the point of this particular slide, I'm referring to bacillus subtilis, which is the star of this video. Now the first class of these amazing natural antibiotics is called lantibiotics. And these are multi-purposed natural antibiotics made by bacillus, which includes subtilin and other molecules. Now these are pretty amazing because they're very potent in very tiny amounts. And studies have shown they're effective at very low doses and among the most powerful natural antibiotics discovered. Now these lantibiotics, they work by attacking bacterial cell walls, especially against gram-positive pathogens, and that would include notably Clostridium difficile or the Clostridium species that are responsible for a lot of gut infections. Now another lantibiotic is mercicidin, and research has shown that this antibiotic, this natural antibiotic from B. subtilis, can inhibit Staph aureus, which is the bacteria responsible for MRSA infections, and that's a drug-resistant form of Staph. These lantibiotics are also effective in laboratory studies against strep pneumoniae, strep pyogenes, which is responsible for strep throat and skin infections, and it appears these natural antibiotics have a very low resistance risk because these lantibiotics target essential cell wall components, the bacteria have a really hard time developing resistance to that compared to the use of synthetic drugs, where unfortunately resistance has developed very quickly over the years and why there's so many antibiotic resistant bacteria now. And the other neat thing about these lantibiotics is they go beyond just killing germs. Some lantibiotics act as chemical language signals, and one way they do that is through quorum sensing, where they go into the GI system and they will sense who is there, uh, what other pathogens, what other good bacteria are there. They use these to coordinate group behavior, and also uh, they use those to defend the gut ecosystem. Now, lipopeptides are also membrane disruptors, so they can use these to punch holes into pathogen cell membranes, essentially making it harder for invaders like yeast or bacteria to survive. And lipopeptides also have a broad antimicrobial reach. Not only are they effective against bacteria, but also fungi, and that includes the candida yeast, and in lab studies, they're even finding effectiveness against viruses. And there's also another class of compounds Bacillus subtilis makes. These are small natural compounds. These include bacillicin and amicumicins. Now these molecules have also a broad antibacterial activity. They have been shown in research to act against a wide range of bacteria, both from the gut and environmental pathogens. Some molecules like the amicumicins not only fight off harmful microbes, but they can also help calm inflammation in the gut lining as discovered in various studies. There's also some lab experiments done showing molecules like diphycidin may interfere with viral activity. Studies have shown that these natural antimicrobials work against a variety of pathogens. For example, Amicumicins have been shown to be effective against Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori. H. pylori is a bacteria that is in the stomach that's often tied to ulcers and gastritis. Compounds like bacillicin and diphycidin have shown activity against gram-negative bacteria such as E. coli. And biofilm busters like surfactin and fungicin have been shown to weaken the defenses of bacteria like Klebsiella. Now it's important to note E. coli and Klebsiella are often a component of small intestinal bowel overgrowth or SIBO infections, as well as IBD flare-ups. Now these natural antibiotics are all part of Bacillus subtilis's genetic arsenal but each bacillus subtilis strain produces a subset of that arsenal. 
meaning that different bacillus probiotics have their own unique antibiotic cocktail of infection-fighting compounds. Now let's talk about five ways these natural antimicrobial substances work inside of the gut. These compounds can directly shape the balance of the microbes, biofilms, and gut infections like C. difficile. So first, as you've probably already gathered, is they work as antimicrobials. Research shows that these bacillus compounds can help push back against harmful microbes in the gut, such as C. difficile, E. coli, Klebsiella, H. pylori, and more. And these are the same kinds of bacteria linked with diarrhea, stomach upset, and recurrent infections. Another way these molecules work is by acting as biofilm busters. Biofilms are like sticky shields that germs build around themselves. These compounds have been shown to break through those shields so the body has a better chance to clear them out. And those biofilms, they're where pathogens like to hide and they can include a mixture of all kinds of different bacteria, even fungus and viruses can hide within biofilms. Another way these molecules are supportive is through immune system support. Studies suggest that bacillus spores can stimulate immune defenses like the IgA molecule and cytokines, and they may also support gut barrier function. Now at the same time, while some of these molecules Bacillus subtilis makes work as an antimicrobial, it also makes compounds that encourage balance to the good microbes and it helps give them a leg up and helps them thrive in the GI system. And as part of that flora rebalancing, Bacillus will help free up space and nutrients and they do this by suppressing or dislodging pathogens that hog up resources inside the gut. And bacillus will be able to then make more room for beneficial bacteria like lactobacillus or bifidobacteria to colonize and grow. And bacillus will also create favorable conditions in the gut through compounds like surfactin, which has been shown to reduce inflammation and help stabilize the gut lining, while bacillus itself can produce enzymes and short chain fatty acids that improve the habitat in the gut for the good microbes. And one last way bacillus works is through competitive exclusion. And this technically is a part of balancing uh, the flora and helping encouraging the good bacteria to grow. But bacillus is able to outcompete with pathogens for both space and nutrients. And this makes it harder for those harmful microbes to dominate in the gut microbiome. So when the gut is hit hard by antibiotics, it doesn't just lose the bad or pathogenic bacteria, but it also loses the good bacteria that help keep the balance in the GI system. And unfortunately, this creates the perfect storm for trouble to return later on. So after the use of antibiotic drugs, the gut's diversity and the total number of bacteria decline and this leaves a space for pathogens like C. diff to fill in and take up that space and cause an infection. Research has shown that certain compounds from these bacillus probiotics will actually work to actively suppress C. difficile bacteria and keep them from overgrowing. These compounds have also been shown to block opportunists like Klebsiella or E. coli. So again, if that space has been made available from that antibiotic drug, they'll come in as opportunists to take over. Well, bacillus has also been shown to work against these opportunistic bacteria looking to take advantage of the use of antibiotic drugs. And then again, bacillus will produce these natural compounds that actually nourish and grow the healthy and good friendly bacteria in your gut to help reestablish the good balance of bacteria. Now, when it comes to probiotics, a lot of people have concerns about probiotic safety. The good news is, is bacillus probiotics have a very long and safe history in both the food and probiotic industry. Now, bacillus probiotics are generally recognized as safe by the FDA. You'll see that referred to as GRAS. 
Bacillus probiotics are naturally found in food, soil, and some fermented foods. Now some bacillus probiotics are natural residents of the human microbiome and they're already living in small numbers in a healthy human gut. Now bacillus are widely used in spore-based probiotic supplements across the U.S. and the world. Another interesting thing about bacillus is it doesn't permanently colonize in the GI system. It will pass through, it will produce those compounds I've been talking about, and it will trigger beneficial shifts inside of the gut. Bacillus play a role beyond just killing germs. As mentioned before, they help regulate biofilms. They also work through quorum sensing to identify who's good and who's not good inside the gut, and they promote community balance. Bacillus probiotics aren't just adding bacteria into your GI system. They act like tiny mobile pharmacies for your gut, producing these natural compounds that support resilience after infection or antibiotics. If you'd like to learn more, my favorite bacillus probiotics, you can find them both at my store, EmbraceHealthNaturals.com. I'll link more details in the description below. But here's the thing, bacillus acting like a natural pharmacy is only part of the story. If you want to unlock their full potential, you'll want to see what else they can do. I cover it all in this video here, the top five reasons to switch to spore probiotics.